Hey everyone, once bitten here. I'm at game two of the Buckeye Battles tournament, uh, this time facing a Dark Elf army. Uh, so th there obviously is uh, the board and the deployment. The scenarios for this, basically the lower right-hand corner is my base camp. Imagine just kind of a, a triangle there that is my base camp. Hers is the opposite corner, so my upper left. So you get scenario points for not having uh, enemies in your base camp area at the end of the game. And then for you get scenario points for having you know, your units in their base camp at the end of the game. Or I think you even got one just having them at their base camp any time during the game. Now the problem is peg knights don't count for doing that. Uh, otherwise all my other units uh, that can move would count for that. So it made for a really interesting game because y you, know, you had to defend the lower right and attack the upper left, uh, at least to some degree. And of course we have... These, all these woods all over the place and that swamp in the middle, uh, none of which I want my knights going through if I can help it. So uh, it made it interesting. And I'll go ahead and um, say now that it made for a game that we actually used the full width of the table, uh, whereas a lot of games kind of get confined to, to small areas. So uh, starting at her far right, she had a Hydra, 21 um, or 20 Black Guard, full command, Banner of Eternal Flame. There in the woods, in the lower left, she actually has uh, five shades, uh, extra hand weapon. Uh, on the hill, she's 20 crossbowmen, standard musician shield. There's a unit of 10 coldwood knights, full command, banner of Hagref, and the champ. The champion has the iron curse icon. Uh, another hydra, and she has a supreme sorceress. On a pegasus, level four, pennant of Kaleth, tomb of Furion, uh, using the shadow lore. 14 crossbowmen with standard and shield, and then... Oh, I'm sorry, take that back. Uh, 15 Corsairs with extra hand weapons, standard, and musician. And then the far left, she's got 14 crossbowmen with standard and a shield. And that's how I deployed. <coughs> so just to save time, you should know what my list is. If not, uh, look one game prior to this, and you can see the first few minutes will tell you my list. Dark Elf turn one, she moves up. Now, I really did not like seeing her Blackguard and Hydra coming down straight to my base camp. Um, you know, deployment, we don't put it, you know, I don't know where she's going to be when I deploy. And so I was, you know, we're kind of playing this game back and forth. But basically, I've got a unit of Knights of the Realm and a unit of Questing Knights. I don't want to take those things into her black guard. <laughs> I, even with two of them, I just would really rather not do it. I did stick my, my Sorceress, my Prophetess, instead of putting her in the normal unit with the Battle Standard Bearer, I put her in with the Knights of the Realm unit facing the black guard so she could cast Dwellers below at them. Uh, other than that, He's kind of hanging back, or she, she's kind of hanging back, and uh, I'm glad to see it. Uh, during magic, she lowers the strength of my peg knights, which is fine. There's nothing they were going to be doing. And we go to Bretonian turn one. So I, I move the, the men at arms up as much as I can. I, what I envision here in the middle is I want his cold one knights to charge my men at arms and get stuck in combat. And then I want to bring my general's unit at the far left knights errant into the flank of the cold one knights and my Battle Standard Bearers unit charging headlong into that Hydra. Now there's kind of some crisscrossing there, so one failed charge will really mess everything up. Uh, but I think my Men at Arms can hold for a while. I think they'll be steadfast for a while. They've got a 5 up ward save against Strength 5, 6 up otherwise. Uh, the General and BSB are both nearby. They'll be steadfast. So even if, if I did mess up one turn, I think I'd be okay. Uh, on the right, I'm holding back. I just want to dwellers below the Black Guard unit, uh, get them down to a manageable size. So there's that. Nice, wonderful, blurry picture. Not sure why I have a double. I think I put this one in here just to show the peg knights on the left. Remember, she has the 14 uh, crossbows over there. So I just want to take them out. Really not a whole lot else uh, I need my peg knights for. Now, I cast dwellers. For some reason, um, the, 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 the girl I'm going against was just kind of frazzled this game. And there, she was just confused about a lot of things. When I, when I got off Dwellers Below, she said the Black Guard were Strength 4. And I, just, I, I, I was thinking their Strength 4 base it must be Strength 5 with Halberds. I know they always kill everything I put against it. So both of us just kind of thought, thought that's how it was. And it wasn't until the end of the game that we realized they were Strength 3 with Halberds. Uh, so anyway, I got Dwellers on them, and it killed only a few. But I'll take it. <laughs> it killed one-third of the unit. Uh, I'll take it. So we go to Dark Elves' turn 2. So the Coldwell Knights tried to charge my men-at-arms, and they failed. And again, I, w I was hoping they would make it. 
So otherwise, you can see how I moved. Ritoni in turn two. Um, this was interesting. So my Knights of the Realm charged the Hydra, and everything was fine there. My General's unit, the Knights Errant on the far left, charged her Coldwell Knights, and she elected to flee. And they are still on the board, but they are real close. Uh, they fled pretty far. My men at arms charged the the shades in the woods, and uh, I'm not sure if she forgot about them or if she liked them there. Uh, I know that when I charged, my plan was to beat them in combat and overrun and get into the flank of the black guard. And I think that's a that would be a wonderful way of dealing with the black guard unit. Um, and I didn't even think about it till later, till after I made the charge, that shades would be stubborn in woods. Uh, so that plan didn't work out. You know, it, I was a little little bit of a surprise there. But nevertheless, uh, that's how it stands. There we go. So there's five shades. They were lined up like that. So there's only, they all get to fight, whatever. Um, and But you can see if I can beat him and chase him down, I will be in the flank of the black guard. And then he, if he, if he, if she, uh, if she stays in that formation, I get a hack away at them and probably win combat every time. And if she turns to face me to chop up the men at arms, uh, I'll get into the, the flank with my knights. So again, pretty happy with, uh, with how that's working out. Uh, this this unit has the banner of eternal flame. So if I'm ever going to take care of the Hydra, this is the unit to do it. Uh, when all was said and done, I only did two wounds. I was very, very, very disappointed with my rolling in that combat. <laughs> Over here, the uh, Peg Knights, they, she's been shooting at them, and, and between stand and shoot and one or two rounds of shooting, she only did one wound on them. So at the end of combat here, uh, oh, you can see the I marked the black guard as the, the, with the, uh, the second dwellers below went off on them. And again, giving them strength four instead of strength three, I didn't kill as many as I perhaps otherwise would have, but they are now down to a manageable size. Uh, in the Shades combat, he, she still has one shade, if not two shades, left. So I decided to reform, get out of horde formation, because I didn't like being spread out that far. Uh, it, it made it too easy for her to counter charge with other units. Uh, in this combat, uh, you know, the problem is the Hydra killed two of my knights. I put two ones in the Hydra. I win by several, and the Hydra holds. So that's kind of unfortunate. I'm going to be getting plenty of combat res. But the best way to take down Hydras is to just combat res it to death, which is hard to do unless you have great armor saves. So that's usually my tactic for them. Uh, Peg Knights don't do as much as they should here, plus these guys are stubborn, so they're steadfast. So until I can get her down to four models only, it's going to be tough to break that unit. So we go to Dark Elf turn three. So, oh, the, unfortunately, the Cold One right Knights that had her... Uh, master BSB. I, I think I forgot to mention that during the lineup. She had a Master BSB uh, in that unit. A Sienna Coldwin, Whip of Agony, Dawnstone, and a couple other things. Uh, failed to rally and couldn't have a reroll because the Battle Standard Bearer was fleeing, of course. So failed to rally, ran right off the board with all those Coldwin Knights in the BSB. Just rotten, rotten luck. Uh, otherwise, she moves up. I don't know if those were failed charges or if she just moved up. I think I don't think she tried to charge, but I'm not sure. Uh, some some crossbows in the middle of the table are picking on my general's unit, the knights errant. I don't care. I don't think she's going to kill that unit to a man, and I don't. I just don't need him. I'm just hanging back with him. So after combat, killed the last of the shades, and then just reformed to face the flank of the black guard. Now remember, this was her turn. So during my turn. Uh, I am going to get to charge them in the flank, and I just love that. I'd, they're pretty close to my my base camp that's going to uh, yield her some s scenario points, which I don't really care about, but I don't want them to be there at the end of the game and lose me some scenario points. So i uh, very excited. I think the men-at-arms can hold them up for a while. So over here this turn, I put, I think, only one more wound on the Hydra, but I did break it in combat. Uh, couldn't chase it down. Didn't quite make it into the Corsairs, but again, it doesn't matter. I'll charge them on my next turn. Over here, we're hacking away at each other. Uh, can't quite get that unit down to four four models, still s steadfast. And we go to Bretonia in turn three. So top left, my, my uh, knights that beat the Hydra go ahead and charge into the Corsairs. Uh, small unit of Corsairs, strength three. I'm very confident I'm going to win that. Uh, my men-at-arms charge the flank of the Black Guard on the, on the right-hand side. My, my ground... My questy knights charge the Hydra on the far right. 
So this one in the middle, if I can beat the Corsair unit, which I should, um, I overrun, I can push that Hydra right off the table and not have to worry about that thing rallying and having to beat it again. So here's how things are looking on this side of the table. And after combat, it looks like that. So you can see, you know, the Black Guard kill a few men-at-arms. It doesn't affect much. They're stubborn. They hold. Now she had to make the choice of does she, does she turn around and face the men-at-arms and expose herself to, expose her flank to my knights, uh, or does she stay like that? I don't know if she thought about it. We didn't talk about it. Uh, I was very happy that she didn't combat reform. Um, but it could be that she did think about it and she just decided she didn't want to expose her flank to the knights. I really just don't know. So at the end of combat over here, uh, we got the crossbows down to four, broke them in combat, could not chase them down. Um, the Corsairs and Hydra are now off the table. She continues shooting at my general's unit and I'm just staying back, not caring. I don't need to take out... I think her sorceress lost several magic levels, so her magic is very ineffective. She doesn't want to bring her anywhere where she's going to get charged, so my general's kind of blocking off a pretty wide area there. And, you know, there's not a whole lot those, those guys can do, except they maybe possibly could have charged the men-at-arms. So over here, uh, we continue to fight. You can see I've lost even more men-at-arms, but I'm winning combat. And then she... The, she failed her stubborn nine on the black guard, and I ran him down with peasants. <laughs> and at the same time, my questing knights uh, beat and ran down the hydra. So, I mean, I, I've, I'd been winning this game for a couple turns. It, it wasn't winning the game didn't make me want to to holler or anything. But having men at arms beat and run down a unit of black guard, I just it was everything I could do to not not whoop for joy. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> Men at arms, you just expect them to do nothing, and when they do something, um, you just get so excited. So it cost them half their unit. I mean, they they started off twice that big, but they uh, were game breakers at the end. It saved. I got a lot of points for her not being in my base camp, and um, you know after that, I easily maneuvered knights into her base camp, got all the scenario points, and you need 501 points for the massacre or a solid win but there's no points available after that and I easily had the victory with all the scenario points so a lot of unfortunate rolling on the Dark Elves part I think there were some some moves that were made or not made that were questionable uh, but hindsight's always 2020 but but certainly I remember both of us thinking it's just insane some of the bad luck that she had I mean her her uh, colder knights running off the table her black guard failing their stubborn nine is just you know a lot of bad luck there uh, on her part but that was it. Hope you enjoyed it.